Hi, I'm Marisa Cerberus of the Cerberi Circus, and I'm happy to join with the other Cerberi siblings to help celebrate someone whose music has been integral in my family's life, Eric Satie, upon the occasion of his 154th birthday. Hi, I'm Todd of the Cerberi Circus, and I'm happy to join the other Cerberi in celebrating Satie's 154th birthday. Hi, I'm Michael Cerberus, and I'm delighted to be celebrating Eric Satie's 154th birthday, along with all of the rest of the Cerberi Circus. To honor Mr. Satie, we would like to read some excerpts from a children's book entitled Strange Mr. Satie, written by M.T. Anderson and illustrated by Petra Mathers. Eric Satie was born by the sea in the village of Enfleur on the coast of France in 1866. I was born very young in a very old world, Satie once said. And he never grew up, but was always a child with an old man's smile. From his earliest years, he loved to play music. He went to a school to learn how to play and compose. Throughout his life, he wanted to make a new kind of music, a kind of music both very young and very old, very bold and very shy, that followed no rules but its own. Satie's music was like an old chant and wild tunes from kick lines or choruses, but mixed together. Many did not like it. Around him was a world of black top hats and stiff starched collars and gloves and bows and curtsies. It frightened and confused him. People thought he was mad and that his music was bad because it was strange. So when he was in school, things did not go well. He dropped out and then back in again and then back out again. He did not go back until he was 40. As a young man, he lived in Paris. He began to make friends. One was a poet who worked as a plumber in his spare time. He took Satie to a famous cafe, the Black Cat, Le Chat Noir, a cafe with grand sweeping staircases and dark wooden chairs and its very own cat named Magriou. And the bones of a poet were hidden inside, and upstairs was a theater where people put on plays with shadow puppets made of zinc. Le Chat Noir, where all of the poets, the painters, the actors and dancers, the wizards and wisecrackers would sit and sip and scribble ideas or talk about art. Some of these people were painters or clowns. Some were inventors of luminous hats or schemes to cover the oceans with cork so they could travel from New York to France. It was a good place to be. It was like a dream. It was the furthest thing possible from the world of rules and polite smiles and handshakes and spats and bowler hats. Satie was asked to play the piano at the Black Cat. Here was a chance to play his strange music, his music which sounded like kickline songs and ancient chants, but mixed together. Here was a chance to have people listen. At 22, he wrote his most famous pieces for piano, the Gemnopédie, which he played at the Black Cat while patrons stopped drinking and stared at the smoke while the cat who was slinking across the piano, was still. No one could tell as they heard this soft music if it was happy or sad. This music like messages from a child's dream world. They sat without moving at the black cat. Finally, Satie had found friends who would not laugh at his strange ways and tunes. He had found a home. One day at the Black Cat, Satie met an artist and model named Suzanne Balladon and fell in love with her. She already had a boyfriend who was a lawyer, a very rich man. Satie didn't mind. He invited himself along on their dates. But Satie had a temper, a terrible temper, 
and he would often have tantrums and yell at his friends for making fun of his music, or liking his music, or breaking his umbrella. And sometimes he would never speak to them again. He and Suzanne argued and argued one night in his apartment until finally he threw her right out the window. Luckily, she had been a circus acrobat, so she sailed lightly through the air and landed on her toes and walked away from Eric Satie, the strange and obnoxious Eric Satie, forever. So it went with Eric Satie. He made friends and lost them in starts and fits. Eric Satie walked alone often through the streets of our world, like a visitor here. His habits were odd. He wore seven identical gray velvet suits, and that was all. He did not take baths, but scraped himself with a piece of stone. Satie was very poor. He had to move into a room so small that to get through the door, he had to climb onto his bed. When he got even poorer, they kicked him out of even this cold, tiny room. He and a friend put all of his belongings into a wheelbarrow and wheeled them through the streets of Paris to another apartment in a different part of town, where he stayed for the rest of his life. He had to cover his windows with paper because the neighbors were always peeking in to see the strange man, the man like a child who lived next door. He lived there alone amidst trash and stacks of paper and a tuneless and tinny piano. Then Satie got sick. He could not stay at home with no one to take care of him. So he lay in bed in a hotel room and the door was attached to him with a string. His friends came. Sometimes he yelled at them. Sometimes he was sorry for things he had done. He was taken to the hospital where the nuns came and went. On the 1st of July, he died. The day of his funeral, poets, musicians, and artists all came to the church near his home to bid him goodbye. In the chapel, a wedding went on while the body was buried. Like his music, it was happy and sad at the same moment. Not one or the other. That's the way with his pieces. Sometimes they can sound like night falling and darkness. Sometimes they can sound like him dancing Strange Mr. Satie, a child man dancing with his umbrella, joyfully spinning and grinning alone. <laughs>